a bottleneck no more. In this session, we'll help you see how improvements in the Outlook client and the new server-side synchronization capabilities will make CRM and Outlook Sync transparent to your end users. In this session, we're going to help you understand the enhancements to the Outlook client. We're going to also help you understand and plan for Outlook client upgrades and understand the server-side synchronization capabilities that are offered with the Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013 release. In the Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013 and CRM Online Fall 13 release, we've added some enhancements to the Outlook client. We've configured some additional reliability around handling the sign-in experience with the Microsoft Online Service Authentication. And we've improved stability by upgrading SQL to CE 4.0 and done some work around process isolation to really give a great experience within the Outlook client. And lastly, we've updated some, uh, some functionality within the Outlook client to really just leverage the new capabilities that have uh, surfaced with our new navigational model within the application. So the Outlook client process design. So this is currently uh, just really a visualization of a lot of things were happening in Outlook. There was a process uh, Outlook.exe that ran. Once you loaded Outlook, it ran. Once you added the CRM, add in that loaded, additional add-ins that you may have been there, then piled on top of that, and the online, go offline was on top of that, then loading the PST files and the cache files, the address book, etc. All of this stuff happened and piled on top of each other. So I mean, Outlook is a very powerful tool. When all of these capabilities happened, they really uh, took a lot of processing. 32-bit versions of Outlook have a 2 gig virtual memory limitation. So as you can imagine, that could fill up rather quickly when you see all of these different things happening at once. An option is to upgrade to a 64-bit version of Office, which leverages the available memory for the PC. However, there's some challenges with that in the sense that you might have some add-ins that are all uh, built specifically for 32-bit. So where does that leave us? Well, in this release, we really looked at how can we isolate that process or isolate the CRM processes so that we can really drive uh, much greater stability with this Outlook client. So main Outlook process, Outlook.exe, still does its thing in the middle. But then in terms of CRM, when I click and open up a record, we have our own web hosting process. And then there's a separate process for when I go offline. So this took those processes out of that one main process, really isolating that so we won't hit those, uh, those memory thresholds so we can get much better stability with the Outlook client. In terms of the Outlook client itself, uh, we haven't changed much to the user interface. I've called out a couple things here. Uh, the screenshot that sits behind is really just Outlook. And like we have done in the past, we show the navigational elements in the left. So once you configure the Outlook client to point to CRM, uh, it will render those. Well, with our new layout or the construct of our navigational experience, the folder hierarchy is slightly different. So I just wanted to call out that within each entity, you will have collateral customers, my work. So each entity itself now has its own dashboard. So rather than just having a one workplace and then each module, each module is kind of its own uh, mini workplace. And then when I click and open up a particular form, you'll say this looks exactly like the CRM form and that is the intention. When I open up the experience, I work in CRM the way I do if I were in the web client. But because I'm accessing this from the Outlook client, I don't really need the navigational elements to go from this record to another record in the system. I'm working within an Outlook. So this form, when loaded from the Outlook client, removes the navigational elements from the top ribbon. So you'll see dynamic CRM, but there is not a dropdown to go to the modules. You will not see sales, you will not see the related entities, but you will see the particular entity you're on, interested in product designer. And you'll see the dropdown beside that so that I can access all of the related entities 
for this uh, specific object. So in Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013, we're introducing this capability around server-side synchronization. In the past, emails were sent out of CRM using one of two mechanisms, either the email router or the Outlook client. CRM itself did not send or receive emails. It relied on one of these two technologies. The email router was a, a, an actual application that needed to be installed on a separate machine. It required an administrator to manage and set up that email router, and it could connect to multiple CRM organizations and process data. So this was really a, a, a great tool to sit between CRM and the email provider and send and receive emails. Microsoft Dynamics Serum for Outlook was another great capability where I could set up my users with Outlook. Outlook is already hooked to some form of an email sending and receiving mechanism, so CRM could just essentially piggyback that. So we could use Outlook, send and receive emails through the Outlook client. This was great when these mailboxes were configured with Outlook. Uh, one of the downsides was the Outlook client itself had to actually be up. So we could have maybe a workflow or something processed within CRM that kicked off some emails that actually wouldn't send until the user opened up Outlook so that Outlook could then actually send those emails. It does not require an administrator to manage, uh, but it cannot be used for queues or basically things that aren't a person that doesn't actually have a, uh, uh, a mailbox. So it clearly calls out some of the pain points here around the fact that Outlook Sync, uh, the primary owner must have a client up and running, the primary sync client has to be up and running, and there's just a burden on the client machine of Outlook has to be up and it has to be running and it's the throughput of sending or receiving those emails. The pain points on the email router is while you know, really a great solution to stay up for that real-term sending and receiving of emails, it must be installed on an on-premise machine. It's hard to configure and manage. It does not scale well. There's inadequate error reporting and obviously uh, or ultimately a high support cost in just maintaining that additional hardware, that additional technology to keep those, uh, those emails flowing. So, so what we've introduced is really bringing server-side synchronization directly into the CRM functionality. It enables server-to-server -server synchronization of email, tasks, appointments, and contacts. So this is gonna enable the connection between Microsoft Dynamics CRM and Microsoft Exchange to have those emails, tasks, appointments, and contacts flow back and forth. It's a cloud-enabled service for CRM online. So I can go into that online uh, deployment and actually configure it and point it to my, uh, my exchange so that I can actually send uh, and receive those uh, emails and synchronizations. It's integrated directly with the CRM async service for processing. The complete configuration and management of this is directly within the settings area within CRM. So imagine what, what I used to do in the email router, those capabilities brought into the CRM experience for central management and central uh, uh, just security of capturing that data and administering directly within the CRM application. Email synchronization enables email sync for the CRM users and queues with external email systems, and it removes the need for installing that email router. So again, reducing the, the need for that hardware, reducing the administration of that, bringing it all directly into the CRM experience so our CRM administrator can administer their users and how emails are sent and received directly within one place in the application. So the configuration of this uh, synchronization functionality really spans around this notion of CRM users and queues. We first are configuring them for email processing. Then we're creating mailboxes. Mailboxes, so every time a user or queue is created, a mailbox is automatically generated. Within the mailbox, we have the ability to capture email address, incoming and outgoing email delivery mechanism, 
and the mailbox credentials secured within the system so that we can actually maintain that data in on-premise and online environments, but uh, securing that, uh, that PII data. And lastly, an email server profile. So once I have the users, once I have their mailboxes, I set up that specific uh, server profile. So the mailboxes associated are, are, are associated to the email profile and all of the information, location, connection type, et cetera, as it relates to that email server are captured in there. So these three elements all put together are administered directly within CRM to facilitate this server-side synchronization functionality. But to really tell you uh, or give you a, a visualization or a story of, of what does this do and how does it work, I have this illustration that walks you through this process. So as we start, we have a user here, Chris. He signed up for CRM online trial account and wants to configure his uh, email mechanism. So he goes into CRM, clicks on settings, email configuration, and then can configure his email server profile. So once within the email server profile, he can select one of two options, either Exchange or SMTP or POP3. So two different types of mechanism. I can hook to an Exchange server or uh, SMT or POP3. There's, uh, there's several provided. I believe it's uh, Outlook, Hotmail, Gmail, but the uh, three or I think five or so of the major POP3 uh, type uh, systems. Then once they've actually configured the email server type, they add the mailboxes. Again, these mailboxes were auto-created when we created my users or queues. We now add them to this specific uh, email server profile. He ensures that the mailboxes have server-side sync as the selected email mechanism. So when I look at my user in CRM, I can specify how do I want email to be sent. In the past, the options used to be Outlook client or email router. Now I will have this new ability to select the server-side synchronization. And then once that's configured, the, uh, the administrator can run a test and verify success that those emails are all uh, able to synchronize and communicate with the different systems. And once validated, the email processing is enabled for the organization. So in terms of the supportability matrix for the server-side synchronization capabilities, we are going to be supporting email synchronization for CRM online and CRM on-premise customers uh, with these specific scenarios. So CRM online is going to be supported with Exchange online. CRM on-premise is going to support either Exchange 2010 or Exchange 2013 on-premise. Either CRM online or CRM on-premise can connect via POP3 SMTP to one of these specified services, Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, MSN, Live, and Outlook.com. In terms of appointments, tasks, and contact sync, so the additional server-side sync capabilities, that's going to initially be offered for our CRM on-premise customers integrated with either Exchange 2010 and Exchange 2013. Additional work, as you can see, is a TBD right now for CRM Online, as that's on our roadmap that we're currently uh, investigating, making that option available for our CRM Online customers. So just a, a, a quick flow here around uh, the experience of once we've implemented this from the end user perspective, we have um, the end user actually is in Outlook. They have an item in Outlook, they specify, hey, track this thing in CRM. Once they do that, it then goes to Exchange. That item is created in Exchange. That item is then passed, obviously, from Exchange to other multiple de or other devices that are connected to that, that specific Exchange server. And then the item is also sent directly to the CRM deployment. That item is created in CRM, and then up, any updates to that particular item are the now come back to Exchange. So giving users that ability to say, hey, I'm in Outlook, 
I create something, I track it in CRM, it goes to Exchange, it propagates to all my devices, it goes to CRM, any changes to that are gonna come back. There's just this constant flow of maintaining uh, synchronization of my data when I want it, where I want it, but allowing the system to do the heavy lifting for me. In terms of updating an item, I have those tracked items where I now have the item on my device. I actually make a change to that particular item. It is synchronized with the Exchange server, updates the item in Exchange, passes that data to CRM. CRM then is, uh, the, the item in CRM is then updated. And then the whole flow just continues. Again, there's no need for Outlook to be that sending and receiving mechanism to be updated. The item, wherever I edit it, is going to Exchange, passing back to CRM, and then being made available to all those different devices. So it's really this link directly between Exchange and CRM that is facilitating this data transfer and making it available on all of my different device types. So recapping this session, we've given an overview of the Outlook client and upgrades that are being made available to the Outlook client experience. And we've talked through the server-side synchronization capabilities that are being made available in Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013 and as part of the Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online Fall 13 release.